you caught me just as I was leaving the house. I'm on my way to beat a dead horse. You want to come? We're going to do two things today. First, we're going to beat the dead horse. I am going to have to show the demonstration video that was supposed to go with the video that I did on sensor size and magnification. About half the people who watched that video commented that I was wrong about this, that you do in fact get magnification when you use a smaller sensor camera. So once and for all, I'm gonna show the demonstration that I meant to show last time, but I cut it out of the video for length. Uh, probably not a, a, a really smart idea. And then as soon as that is done, I am going to give you as many top tips as I can cram into the remaining time. Uh, and seeing as the remaining time is uh, essentially limitless, um, I'll just keep giving you top tips until I drop from exhaustion or get to six, because I only wrote down six. Did you follow that? It's complicated. And thank you to my Patreon supporters. Sincerely, thank you. And to the folks who have made the donations through the website, your help is greatly appreciated, sorely needed and greatly appreciated. So thank you very much. So let's get over to the demonstration. This probably looks a little more daunting than it actually is, yeah, but let me show you what I've got here. Uh, very simply, I have a macro platform. It's just a heavy wooden base onto which I have bolted a stack shop focusing rail. I did this just to have fine adjustment control over the position of the lens. But once the lens is in position, I am going to turn the stack shot off and unplug it. So the entire assembly won't be able to move. So I have cameras positioned to where you'll be able to see everything that I'm doing. We won't be moving the lens or the camera. I have already positioned the lens at 300, well, I've positioned the system at 300 millimeters from the subject and that won't change. So we'll be putting a different camera onto this lens, but the lens won't move. How did I do that? By breaking one of my long lenses and then breaking my macro lens. I took the tripod collar off my 70 to 200 Tamron and it didn't fit on the macro lens, which isn't made to use with one of these. So I adapted it. And uh, in the process, I think I broke the autofocus, but it works great for this. So long as I never move it again from here, I'll be okay. So the reason I've done this is so that you can see that there, there is no change in the distance between the lens and the subject. And our subject consists of the little silvery bit from an off and on knob of something that I, something else that I broke. And I took this off because I thought one day it could come in handy. And it does come in handy because I needed a subject that had some definition to it, but was smaller than a, well, 16 millimeters. That would be the, uh, the height of the sensor on the crop frame camera. So I wanted something that would at least fit inside that, but not be too small so you couldn't see size changes. This is 12 millimeters across. I measured it. I measured it not just with a ruler like I would normally do in a casual setting. I used a caliper. In fact, I measured everything with a caliper. Um, well, it's 11.75 millimeters, but that's close enough. We'll just remember that. Okay, so 11.75 millimeters on the, the thing, and I positioned it completely vertical, and then I checked it with my spirit level, and then I checked it again with this 90 degree plastic thing, and I just put it on upside down. I was up until the wee hours of the morning last night or this morning trying to set all this up, but I kept getting distracted. I went to all this trouble to make sure that the platform doesn't change so that you know that the lens is focused at its minimum, which is 0.3 meters. 
the subject is as close to the sensor as it can be and still be in focus. And those things aren't going to change. Any changes you do see are going to be related to the sensor. My D850 doesn't have a built-in flash. I was going to try to keep it really simple and just use a built-in flash, but it doesn't have one. So what I'm going to do instead is just use a single V862, um, my Godox speed lights. I'm going to position it right next to the camera, point it at the doodad, and it's uh, only on one 256th power, which is all it needs for the photograph. Now, camera settings are going to be identical on both cameras. And they are basically manual settings. I'm going to set the aperture to f8, um, manual everything, no automatic anything. The lens itself is turned off. I don't have any vibration control or autofocus, so it will be manually focused and left there. Now, the reason I put it on the macro rail was so that I could manually focus it without turning the focus ring that I broke by bolting this thing onto it. And the reason I have a spirit level is to just make sure that you can see that everything is true and level. I don't want there to be any cause for somebody to think, well, you know what, that, that only looked like it wasn't enlarged because of the fact that his spirit level was wonky. I don't want that. I don't think I mentioned this, but of the people that just weren't having my explanation for this and still insist on the magnification being real, one of the people was a whole camera club. <laughs> a whole camera club got together and said, we aren't buying that. So, uh, yeah, and they were the ones that suggested rulers. So I actually have a ruler. I, I'll position one of these cameras so that you can clearly see it. Uh, I have it set, lined up with the sensor marker on this camera, which is in exactly the same position as it is on this camera because they both have the same flange focal distance, which makes it a lot easier. It means I should be able to put this directly on the lens and have identical setups except for a smaller sensor. This is a Nikon D850. It has a full frame sensor, which is 36 millimeters wide and 24 millimeters high. This is the D7500, which is a crop frame camera. The sensor on this camera is 24 millimeters wide and 16 millimeters tall. So that should be exactly what we need to prove or disprove this fact. So let's do the test. Here we are, this is the platform. Uh, let me put live view on, on my camera. So the first, All right, so you're looking at the same thing I am, which is um, the little metal button. It's in focus. I focused it by moving the stack shot, which I have turned off and unplugged. So that won't move unless I break it, which is always a possibility. I've got the flash set on um, 1128. No questions, minimum focus distance, focused on the little button still focused yes and uh, the flash is on all right we've got a nice histogram i think i've put the button upside down not to worry though uh, let's look at the picture again make sure we've got it that's all we need that really is everything all right let's change the camera Gorilla taped the focus ring. That's for two reasons. One is so that I can't change the focus accidentally, and two is to stop the ring from falling off, which it's been doing since I broke it. All right, so to get this off, I don't know if this is gonna get in the way. index the lens this is now the prop frame camera 
it still got the focus set at the minimum at 0.3 meters, it's in manual. But that is exactly where the lens was. hear you saying now oh my god that's bigger that's bigger than it was in the other one it is isn't it but don't get too excited because that my friends is the illusion as i shall explain momentarily now let's see if we're in focus that appears to be in very sharp focus are we all in agreement then that that's a fair representation of the shot taken on a crop frame camera with the same lens, same position, same everything. And uh, much the same histogram too. All right, is everybody happy with that? Speak now or forever hold your peace. All right, I will uh, put these cameras side by side. By the way, I, I, I didn't mention this, the screen sizes on both of these cameras are identical. They, they don't look it because one of them has a frame around it, but when you measure them, they're exactly the same, 67 by 50 millimeters. All right, so there's one and there's the other. Read them and weep. That is the crop frame camera, and that is the full frame. Okay, full frame, crop frame. I hoped I wouldn't have to say this again, but if the personal persons who borrowed the lens cap from my Tamron 90 would please have it back on my desk before the end of this video, I don't think we'll have to say anything else about it. I'm disappointed, disappointed. Okay, so you saw both of the photographs on the cameras, and that is the source of the misunderstanding about magnification. What most people don't take into account is the fact that the two cameras have different size sensors, but they both have the same size screen, which means that the image on the crop sensor camera has to be enlarged to fit on the screen. And that's the whole solution right there. That's the problem. We are so used to looking at the back of a crop sensor camera and assuming that what we are seeing on the back of this camera is equivalent to what we would see on the back of a full frame camera that it's telling us the same data. This is the whole picture at full resolution. Well, it's not. It's actually not for either of them because the, the image on the full frame camera has been increased by about 1.87 times. And the image on the crop frame camera has been increased about twice that. So they've both been enlarged. So what you're seeing on the back of the cameras are enlarged images from the sensor. And because the smaller sensor has to have been enlarged more, it gives the impression of greater magnification. But we know it's not greater magnification because when the camera enlarges the image to show it on that screen, it degrades the image. It spreads out the pixels. It's an enlargement, not magnification. Magnification making the subject larger in your photograph is something that's done by the lens and it implies that the image is going to be at full resolution once the lens presents it larger to you. So at the core of all of this confusion is the fact that enlargement is not the same as magnification. Because in order to get the smaller crop frame image big enough to fill the screen on the back of the camera, it has had to spread the data out. It's had to do an enlargement. If you want to 
keep a full resolution image. You have to get a bigger picture through magnification. And the only ways you can do that are by going with a, a lens that does that for you or by moving the lens out in front of your camera. By stretching out the image distance, you're able to compress the object distance and get magnification. Now, for those of you that are absolutely convinced I'm wrong, that explanation probably isn't going to do any good. Instead, what we can do is look at the images in Lightroom and then take them over into Photoshop and actually look at how many pixels go into each of these pictures. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we are in Lightroom and I've just imported the two test images. I have done nothing to them. Lightroom will open them in some portion of their cor correct full size. In this case, it's 6%, and you can see that up in the navigator. But if you hover over the photograph in the film strip, it'll show you the size of the original document, which is 5,500 pixels by 3,700 pixels for the crop frame, frame camera. And if we look at the full frame camera, we'll see it's a bigger image. It's uh, uh, 8,200 and 50 uh, pixels by 5,500, so it's considerably bigger. So with both of the images highlighted, I'm gonna right click and go to Edit, Edit in Photoshop. So here we are in Photoshop, open, and we have the first image, um, and it's showing it to us at 33 and a third percent. This is the crop frame camera image. Now there are several ways that we can do this. One is, simply to measure the size of the disk. So the measuring tool is down at the bottom. There's a ruler tool. And if you click and drag across the, the shape you're measuring, the diameter of this thing is L1. This, this is the length we just measured is 2803. Now this is the full frame. You can see there's a lot more territory, it's got a wider field of view. It's about 27 degrees for the lens that I was using on a full frame camera. But of course, that field of view is going to be very much narrower on a crop frame camera, uh, because you're cutting off, you're truncating part of the image cone. But let me get back to what we were doing, which is measuring this uh, disk. So we'll do the same thing. And we get 27 Oh, 04. I forgot what we got on the other one. 2803. So it's with, it's within a, a, a handful of pixels. That's one way we can show that there hasn't been any magnification. There's probably a better way. Let me go back to Lightroom, select both of the images, right click on them, go to edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. Now what this will do is open up both of these images at the same time in the same document, and it'll open them up at their correct size. So that's the crop frame picture right there in, in its actual proportions. And if I turn back, the, turn back on the full frame image, you can see, as you would expect, by a factor of 1.5, it's bigger. What I'm gonna do is reduce the opacity uh, of both images down to about 50%. I'm going to change the blend mode on both of them to multiply, which will make the area where they overlap more visible. And then what I'm going to do is with the crop frame camera picture highlighted, I'm going to drag it until the disc is superimposed on the disc from the full frame camera, like so. So you can see, I hope, the subject of your photograph is identical in size, no matter what size camera sensor you record it on. When, when the crop frame camera shows you a nice big picture on the back, it's enlarging, it's not magnified.